are these people? First story that I actually want to get to, first article, now that we've already gotten to five articles, but these are like the ones I want to get through, like, in depth, right? This one I've heard nobody talk about, and this is a big story. The FEC has gutted an anti-corruption law that separated super PACs from candidates. So basically, dark money, here we come. All right? Super PACs are supposed to be completely independent from candidates, but the FEC just, appro just approved a plan to let them collaborate on joint fundraising committees. And not, not the good kind of joint. Definitely not the good kind of joint whenever you see Lindsey Graham's face there. All right? And his, his campaign requested the ruling on super PACs and candidate committees collaborating on joint fundraising efforts. Thanks, Lindsay. Thanks, Blanche. All right. The agency that oversees federal elections and campaign finance laws will allow candidates to jointly fundraise with super PACs, a move that watchdogs say will help special interests exert undue influence in politics. <laughs> As if they haven't already. They're just further legalizing it now. All right. In July... Lawyers for Senator Lindsey Graham's campaign sent the Federal Election Commission an advisory opinion request to ask if the campaign could participate in a joint fundraising committee with a super PAC where both groups would share data and other information as required under the joint fundraising agreement and applicable FEC reporting regulations and coordinate scheduling logistics regarding fundraising events. Ah! Now, we talked a little bit, I think, about Citizens United and unlimited fundraising when it came to Bitcoin and crypto last week. Super PACs, of course, which were created after Citizens United, are required under campaign finance laws now to operate independently, also known as independent expenditure-only committees. Super PACs are allowed to raise and spend unlimited sums of money and it's common for them to receive multi-million dollar contributions from individuals, businesses, and nonprofits, huh. Preventing them from coordinating with campaigns, which can only take donations of up to 3,300 from individuals per election. But th that's the individuals, the corporations, they could take unlimited amount already, is a way to stop big donors from effectively circumventing campaign contribution limits and potentially corrupting politicians. It's not working. <laughs> Last Thursday, the FEC approved the Graham campaign's request to add Super PAC to, a, to its joint fundraising committee because it said the campaign attested in its proposal that it wouldn't engage in financial transactions that violate cam campaign contribution limits and would not coordinate with the Super PAC. Sure, Lindsay. Uh-huh. Yeah. All right. <laughs> last week's opinion... I can't believe... Like, last week's opinion defied any common sense meaning of coordination, much less the definitions spelled out in, a feder in federal campaign finance laws and the FEC's own regulations. And that's someone from the, cam the nonprofit watchdog campaign legal center. Well, they're not even a regulator. They're like a they're like an independent nonprofit that private regulators. Well, something like that. Despite the requester, it's a requester, not a regulator, admitting that the joint fundraising venture would involve <clears throat> the campaign and super PAC fundraising through a shared political committee, exchanging data and producing communications together. The FEC said no coordination would occur. Huh? Mm hmm Okay. So Graham's campaign did not state in its request which super PAC it wants to jointly fundraise with, but it's likely re referring to Security is Strength, a super PAC tied to the bro program South Carolina Conservative Action Alliance that has spent more than $17 million supporting the senator's re-election efforts over the years. Huh? How about that? They want to spend even more, and they just want further access and influence. Security is strength, 
Their biggest donors have included two dark money nonprofits, go figure, the Government Integrity mm -hmm. Fund, very mysterious and oblique sounding, and the American Exceptionalism Institute. Exceptionalism Institute, yeah. All right. yeah. As well as wealthy individuals, including Miriam Adelson, who has dual citizenship, Ooh. Craig Dushu. D Dusha Swa. Dush, Dusha, Dusha bag, yes. And, and Helen yes. Schwab. I wonder if there's any relation to Klaus. I don't know that speculation. Absolutely has to be. All right. Senator Graham, of course, will be next up for re-election a year and a half from now, or almost actually two years from now in 2026. He's already gearing up for that. I think he thinks he's going to be Speaker of the House someday. He's going to outlast everyone. Yeah. He's going to end up with the damn gavel. All right. And depending on who's, you know, we got an election coming Not up. Not Speaker of the House. I mean, you know, a, a majority leader of the Senate. Um, yeah. Through the uh, Though the Graham campaign may become the first campaign to work with the Super PAC in a joint fundraising arrangement, uh, many have tested the legal limits over the years uh -huh. on their interaction with Super PACs. All right. In 2020... Mayo Pete was a guest at an event. I think that might have been at the wine at the wine cave, hosted by the nonprofit yeah, the cave. affiliate of a yeah. super PAC that was making independent expenditures to support his campaign. Earlier this year, a super PAC backing Booby, that's Robert F. Kennedy Jr., for those who don't know, received millions of dollars in what it called bridge funding from a security consultant who was also the Kennedy campaign's largest vendor funny um, how that works candidates you run as a democrat hmm. uh, what, what happens when you scratch one of those laundering laundering lots of laundry done um receipts proof timeline screenshots every, everything fucking everything <laughs> <laughs> <I love that. laughs> Uh, uh, candidates routinely place <laughs> conspicuous red boxes to, containing texts about their messaging goals on their websites as a way to communicate to super PACs about what kind of language they would like them to use in ads. <laughs> right. It's literally like a cheat sheet. Like you don't need to coordinate when they just give you the test answers. Like we have a website, like, yeah, guys. This, this, and this. Right. Well, there's your problem. The Graham campaign's Jesus. request said that the senator, his campaign, and any of their agents would not discuss the non-public campaign plans, projects, activities, or needs of Senator Graham or his campaign with any super PAC participating in the joint fundraising committee. No, I that guarantee would... you, polish, polish Israeli boots is the first check mark. You gotta, you know, that would be illegal, square, right? guys. He's he couldn't yeah. do that. In a comment, lawyers for Elias Law Group working on behalf of the Democratic Congressional Campaign Committee and the DSCC argued that uh, the request provides no explanation for how a super PAC that's part of the Joint Fundraising Committee would prevent itself from obtaining or using non-public information. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, no, there's there's no mention of the super PAC adopting and implementing any protocol that could protect against any unlawful coordination. Hmm. There's no discussion of how the super PAC would block the flow of material non-public candidate and party information, including plans, projects, activities, and needs of either from reaching staff, working to create, produce, or distribute the super PAC's other public communications. It seems to align weirdly anyway, so how do you delineate whether it's the need of the campaign or the need of the super PAC at that point? The opinion was passed by a 4-1 uh -huh. vote of the commission, of course, with one abstention during the August 29th meeting. With I, I don't understand. I mean, I do, but the most corrupt motherfuckers end up on this stuff. The lone opposing vote was vice chair... Ellen Weintraub, who issued a dissenting statement, calling it a classic example of not seeing the forest for the trees. No, I think they see the forest for the trees. <laughs> yeah, they own the forest. At right. This point. No, they, right. They're looking at the wrong. They're looking at the money forest. Unfortunately, she says the commission has created far too many holes in what should be a solid <gasps> wall dividing candidates and their committees from the super PACs that support them. 
There shouldn't even be super PACs in the first place. That's a whole other story. That's a Supreme Court issue. Because I'm unwilling yep. to pull another brick from that essential barrier, I respectfully dissent, knowing that you're going to be overridden <laughs> anyway. Right. For years, the FEC's six commissioners have been deadlocked on their decision-making, with the three Democrats on the commission and the three Republicans consistently disagree. But that changed in the past couple of years because we now have a uniparty, as Biden nominee Dara Lindenbaum has occasionally sided with Republicans on matters, including on the Graham advisory opinion. Notice it's never the other way. It's only Democrats yeah. capitulating to their conservative counterparts because they're all the same and they're, yeah. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Right. So Lindenbaum has also, of course, joined Republicans on rulings that let candidates raise unlimited amounts of money for ballot measure committees and allow super PACs and outside groups collaborate with candidates on door to door canvassing operations. Just dark money everywhere, folks. Go for it. Joint fundraising committees, increasingly common, increasingly because it's been made legal can be used to accept a large donation, for example, up to $929,600 for the Irish Victory Fund. Thanks, Kamala. Kamala yeah, that's, Kam Chameleon. That's a, million, that's a million dollars. Right. That's and, pretty much what that is. And up to 850000 for the Trump 47 Committee. Uh, it's bipartisan. Another, another million, <laughs> give or take. Two of the top you raising know, we can round up. fundraising committees this cycle. That gets allocated between participating committees. Right? And still, that's a drop in the bucket compared to everything yeah, that they're nothing. spending. Yeah. All right. The Harris Victory Fund and the Trump Fund each split that with dozens of state Democratic and Republican parties. So that gets spread around quite a bit. And in the end, what, does a state get $50,000 maybe if they're lucky? $25,000 yeah. to their fundraising committee? It ends up well, and this is getting watered okay. down and spread around to These buy off influence. One single donations to both, like a, a single pack, right? Which we know there's like millions of packs. Please tell me how how much federal funding do you get at five percent? Twenty. How do you compete with this level of fundraising? Please explain, because one million of a single donation to a single pack is a, a, you know, blip on the radar. There's a lot of bogeys in that department. So, uh, you know, how much do you think is in their war chest any given day? Um, like, I, I know you want something, but. Well, we know I, that, you know, <laughs> we know they've already raised. Or over a billion dollars in dark money and like legal pack money. I mean, it's it's yeah. crazy the amount of money that's being thrown around. So it's you know I, I don't know how anybody expects to, to to compete with that. We've got to get laws and something passed. And I, yeah. yeah, they're not going to pass the laws. So it's like okay, they're just going to keep raising more and more and more unlimited amounts of money. From crypto, from Ponzi schemes, right. from yeah, there's always going to be a loophole here with this millionaires so, and billionaires, at least right and now, bankers and opening it up to hedge funds. Like, when is BlackRock literally just going to be able to buy a share and a stake in the Democratic Party? Has it happened already? Yep. I mean, technically, it kind of does, but it's washed through all these other I'm entities. I guarantee you, there's. Right, it's put through nine different packs, and you know. I'm just talking about a direct private fine. equity state ownership stake. Look, the, both of these are private corporations anyway. Maybe they even do own a stake, for all we know. Well, I mean, this article makes it seem like the the biggest issue is the fact that these packs are telling the people on their websites what they should think. You don't think those people are already going to coffee in the morning? Like every day? There were these weird calls separation from rules, donors. And now they're just removing the 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 ruse. Yeah. And they're pulling down the veil and saying, you know what? This is bullshit. They're all coordinating anyway. 
Well, we might as well make it anyway. legal. No! What they should do is make the fucking super PACs illegal. Mm -hmm. con con Congress could do that. Very easily. Oh. All right. How does how does the woo put it? Right. They're not ever gonna do that. You know. Right. Like my daughter said. <laughs> Cash rules everything around me. That's right. Cream, get the money. Dollar dollar billion. Literally. <laughs> dollar dollar billion. Unreal. Yeah. Unreal. That's uh that's about what I hey, how about that? That that wrapped up pretty nicely. But support independent media, like I said, support INN. Support the Zago Brothers independent art as well. They are independent. We're independent. It just kind of works. You know? Independence helping each other. And and this is nobody else is gonna do this for us. They got billions. We got us. And we got yep. you. So thank <clears throat> you. Really. I love you all. <laughs>